Get all the latest now on what we understand is happening on the ground in Gaza. Our military analyst, uh, Sean Bell, is with me. Um, we're having to glean an awful lot, aren't we, because of the communications blackout. But the consensus seems to be, from everybody I've spoken to this morning, that this is not the ground offensive, Sean. So when might we expect that? Yeah, good, good afternoon, Sam. Um, one of the challenges of all of this, as you say, is gaining information. Only um, the IDF know exactly what is going on. But after the Hamas uh, attack on the 7th of October, it was evident that that was a very well-planned attack. The Hamas would have known that that would have provoked a big uh, retribution from Israel. So they would have planned for it and they wouldn't have had a few days. This would have been decades to plan for it, potentially bringing in specialist weapons from Iran as well. As a result, you'd expect the Israeli forces to walk slowly and just test the water. And therefore, these raids were all example or an opportunity to risk mitigate. Now, where these raids are going to occur, no, the IDF is never going to say anything. But overnight, we've heard from Hamas that there were um, clashes up in Beit Hanoun, up to the north there, and Burich, uh, just to the south of the Gaza River. That gives a clear indication of where they, they might have been overnight. Part of the aim of these is to probe Hamas's defences, is to get rid of some of the obstacles that are out there. And things like the uh, mobile network going Going down is a classic military ruse because it forces Hamas to pop up onto other comms networks which potentially can be intercepted and then find out what's uh, actually going on. But the IDF will be wanting to do a phased approach. It won't be all or nothing. The first, they're trying to do an air, land and maritime operation. We had reports last night that the IDF actually mounted an assault from the sea as well, all designed to unsettle Hamas. But the harsh reality is time is not with the Israelis here. Every day that goes by, international community is more and more concerned about the humanitarian position that's erupting. Likewise, Hamas is using the hostages, drip feeding them, saying if there's a ground offensive, that'll increase the risk to the hostages. But Prime Minister Netanyahu is clearly angry and he wants to get on and do something. OK, well, um, Hamas have said that they will respond with full force. We understand from Israeli military that they took out one of Hamas's key commanders. What happens next? Because this is a clear escalation. It is. The, I expect these sporadic raids will gradually become uh, going in and coming out again. We'll actually be going in and staying in. The first thing we expect to see is the armour probably go in and encircle Gaza City with a ring of steel. The difficult thing then comes what you do with the city itself. That's the most dangerous part of the operation. One option is to spend, send special forces in there who are specially trained to retrieve the hostages um, and um, potentially target Hamas. But the bombing campaign will probably continue, but we coordinated around the ground forces. Um, what's been interesting is the tunnels, that that's going to be the biggest threat, because those tunnels, Israelis bluntly don't know where they all are. There's undoubtedly be huge risk to the IDF. There'll be traps in there, there'll be booby traps. And the hostages. And the hostages uh, in there. Interesting the hostages you bring up, because it's interesting that Israelis have largely seemed to dismiss all of the talks about trying to get the hostages released. And part of that, if you look closely at the wording, particularly from the Qatari side who are brokering this, it's about the civilian hostages. Well, of course, the Hamas are actually holding a number of military hostages as well. And the Israelis almost certainly will not want to differentiate. They want to get all their people out. And that's probably why they're going to go in regardless. Meanwhile, the casualties continue to rise. Um, the Israelis claim that uh, they lost 1,400 people. The Hamas-controlled Gaza Health Authority are now saying there are 7,300 pa Palestinians have lost their life. What the actual truth is, we don't actually know, but, the tr but what they're trying to do is show that is this a proportionate response by the, by the Israelis? Final point, though, interesting to note, the Israelis, they had a poll of their population to see whether there was support amongst the Israeli population for a ground offensive. Interestingly, the majority of Israelis did not support the idea of a ground offensive. It'd be really interesting to see what influence, if anything, that has on their political masters. OK, Sean, thank you very much.